I'm Margaret Green and I run the original Lincoln Ghost Walks. Been running the Ghost Walks about 18 years because they were started by the Nottingham Ghost Walk people with my son as their guide. And one night I acquired a ghost walk. But I didn't have time to learn it. I'd only been listening to him talking about it and just did it. And I still feel sick before I do it every time. We got interested because when we moved to Lincoln and then when we moved in here, we'd still got the curtains up. It was the day after we moved in and they'd got those long pulleys with the weight on the bottom and we both just sat here and those pulleys just came out into the room and were there for about five seconds and then they didn't drop they just very slowly went down and my husband said how did you do that <laughs> I didn't so that was the first we do her, know her name it's wonderful she's called Fanny Duck Mountain she owned all the land around here she was a farmer and she doesn't like electrics and she switched everything off apart from the lighting for three days. And she's been quite naughty on occasions. She actually rubbed my husband's back when he had a slip disc. And the previous people, they'd actually seen her. She was quite an old lady. I suppose it has to be Melanie. That is my favorite story about the farm. Melanie. Her brother Jason and her little boy David, he was about four, were in the castle. The last place to go was to the top of Cobb Hall where they did hang people. Uh, the last one was 1877, the public hanging there. They hang three women and 35 men in total up there. And it does feel a bit unpleasant when you go up there. But they'd gone not holding the little boy's hand they'd gone in and she felt quite faint as soon as she got up there so she leant against the wall and this woman just appeared in what we now know as Victorian prison uniform for the castle and she she's walking towards the little boy with her hands out and she said it was very obvious this woman was going to push him down the steps and she said I ran and grabbed him she said but my brother's watching the same thing and then he grabbed us both took them downstairs, they had a coffee, they were shaking like leaves. Had we seen it? No, we couldn't have seen it. Sunny afternoon, da da da, they talked themselves out of it. But when they felt better, she said, can we just go back up? I need to clear this one up, that there's nothing there. But they hung on to the child this time. The woman didn't appear, but she couldn't breathe. And she said, there's just no air. She said, I was sucking in, but there was no air. And she got to the top of the steps and sat there. It was the only place to sit down. And it took her about 10 minutes to get her breathing back to normal. That's when they thought, well, let's leave, let's go. We're not messing about. But as they left Cobb Hall and left the castle, all they could hear, and all three of them could hear it, a voice saying, come on your own. Come on your own. When we started telling this story, other women had said, well, other families, when my little boy was four, five, he was frightened of going up there or there was nothing to see, but he wouldn't go up there. Hi, my name's Doug Robinson. I'm a friend of Lincoln Castle and one of the train guys that provide guided tours for the public in the castle. Um, I've been a resident of Lincoln for about 40 years and always loved the castle. We used to bring our kids in here when they were a lot younger because it's a great place for kids to play and in those days you used to be able to get up on the walls. My daughter actually got her head stuck in the railings at one stage. So we used to come in here as a, as a family. Um, a couple of years ago I went down to working three days a week and was looking for ways to fill my other two days and there was a training course on for guides. Um, three month training course. Um, exams and everything at the end, but uh, I thought that would be a great way to spend some time. We tell the story of a lady called Priscilla Biggerdyke, who was hanged in the castle um, in, the eight, in 1868, I think, 
Um, she was found guilty of murdering her husband. She protested her innocence all through the trial and when she'd been found guilty. She was hanged on December the 28th um, and still protesting her innocence. Um, some years after that, one of the lodgers who lived with her and her husband confessed to the murder, so she was obviously telling the truth all that time. There is a tale, and I don't know, I, I haven't seen the truth of it, but in the Lucy Tower over there where the graveyards are, her graveyard is, is up there, um, some of the guys have said that if you go up there on December the 28th, there's always a flower on the grave, and people have tried to find out who puts it there, but no one's managed to do so. My name is Band. I am a media student here at the university, and this is my dog, Binky. Um, my most recent encounter was the other night, me and Binky were sort of out on a walk, and as I crossed over the road, he sort of stopped, and he started growling at a particular point. I was, I was confused. This is not ordinary behavior for him, so it was a bit, a bit of a weird one. So carried on sort of, I managed to make him walk and we got sort of halfway down the road and I turned around and in the spot that he was growling at, there was a girl sat there in a white dress with blonde hair. I should have gone and asked her if she was okay, but I was a bit sort of confused by the whole situation, like she sort of appeared out of nowhere. Uh, so we carried on walking down the road a bit and then he stopped to do his business. And out of curiosity, I just turned around to see if she was still there or still crying and she completely disappeared. Um, it must have been about five seconds, so she either sprinted off or completely dis disappeared. As we sort of walked back down that road when I was going home, um, he stood again and started barking at the exact same spot. So I was very confused by the whole situation. Um, more confusing than scary, I'd say. It made me feel on edge at first, um, I was still confused by the whole situation, um, but as sort of you walked back to that spot, I felt like a cold chill. And I don't know if it's sort of a psychological thing that I've just seen something in that spot that's disappeared and that sort of sent me into an overdrive of thinking, or if it was actually a, a sort of paranormal area that sort of the temperature had actually rapidly dropped in. We don't like telling a story if it's only one person told us. I mean, like the horse in Castle Square now, I was told for the 11th time three months ago. Or like the orbs we get or the figures we get at the Greystone Stair Arch, things like that. So you, you like a few that have seen it before you start telling it to be as truthful. We love doing it, but when the weather gets icy, I can't go in a mobility scooter then, so the other two have to pick up the, the bits. I don't know, there's someone who's very interested in taking it over, but it's mine, it's independence. It's the first thing I've done that is mine. So yes, there's a lot of times when I've had enough, but a lot of times when I want to keep it going. So I can't answer that question because I don't know. <laughs>